Hi, Susan here with another scroll saw project. This one is going to be a very small project. I'm going to be making cathedral earrings. Now there are some free patterns out there. I know Steve Good has a good pattern, but I wanted to design my own. So this is actually one and three quarters inch tall and one inch in width. I'm going to be using a dark walnut to imitate the metal around the outside and I'm going to cut out all of the inside parts for the earring so that I can actually use epoxy in colored form to stain the stained glass part of it and then I will be slicing the wood in 1 8 inch thickness once that's dried. So I should end up with about three pair of earrings when I'm all done. This piece of wood is about four and a half inches wide and about six and a half inches long. I want to have something to be able to hold on to when I'm uh, processing this on the scroll saw. And I'm just putting some clear contact paper on and then I'll be spraying with Gorilla Glue the back of this and putting it right on top of the contact paper. Now most of this board is unusable. It's got a big old knot in it and this side is not nice, but this little corner here will be a very nice piece to be able to cut out. I'm using my drill press for this. You could use a hand drill, that's fine as long as you're definitely drilling at a 90 degree angle. Use the largest drill bit you can use for the smallest hole. Well, I've already made my first mistake. I actually took my drill press and pushed it against all the way up to the paper and kind of ruined this part right up here. So I had to take my pencil and redraw the lines where I'm going to be cutting up here and I'll be more careful with the other holes. Lightly sand the back where the exit holes are so that it's nice and smooth on your scroll saw. You can really use any type of scroll saw for this project, but one with a quick release on it will make things go a lot quicker. Always use a brand new blade for each new project. And my blade of choice is a Pegas MGT-5R. I thread it through, tighten it up, check my ping, and I'm ready to cut. You don't want to go too fast. You don't want to push the blade to the left or the right. You want a nice, even pace when you're cutting. This is one inch thick wood and my Pegas 5R is just really going through it so easily. A couple notes, make sure that you are not forcing your blade through, make sure that you are not trying to curve it side to side, have a nice even steady pace for cutting. Now at the very end, my last uh, video in the corner there is going to explain that I go back and clean up each spot that maybe wasn't quite even with the rest of it. I'm removing the pattern here and drawing on the outside shape that I'll eventually be cutting out. It's because I'm going to be sealing this all with polyurethane on the top and on the inside and the bottom so that the epoxy will not leak through. Now it's time to do a good sanding and clearing up of all the sawdust before the polyurethane. This is a very important step. Do not forget to put polyurethane on the inside at the top and the bottom. So this will seal the piece so when you put the epoxy colors in it does not bleed into each other. I'm going to, on the back, put some packing tape. It, is, it stops at the bottom and that might not be strong enough so I'm also going to use some blue painter's tape on top of that. Gather all your supplies together before you start. I have my little measuring cups which these are a little bit overkill, but they're the smallest I have. I have my resin. I have my pigments that I'm going to be using, white, gold, and a blue. I have backup molds because I'm sure I'm going to be pouring too much and I'll have leftover. Mine, like most of them, say to mix equal parts A and B or put them in separate containers and then you mix them together after that. It's always best to have more then not enough, especially if you're going to be using colors, you'll never get them exactly right. And I'm going to check and make sure these were equal. I'll be blending these two together and mixing for about two to three minutes. And then I'm going to let it sit. Now the instructions don't say this, 
but what I have discovered is if you let it sit for um, about five minutes, it'll get rid of some of the bubbles. I'm going to have plenty left over to do a couple other resin pours. I'm using a craft stick here to fill these holes. I have seen people use plastic forks, the handle of the plastic forks, whatever you can use to get precise pouring into these holes so they do not, the colors do not blend together in the different holes. I am poking the white parts so that if there are any um, air bubbles, hopefully they'll work out and I'll know I have plenty left to refill. So I'm going to go to the next color and let that sit for a little while. Normally I would take a blow dryer or a heat gun and try to expel all the bubbles, but if I do that, the colors are going to start blending. I keep poking with my um, toothpicks and seeing if I need to refill any as I go along. I got enough left over to make a round bobble and a couple hearts and a couple shaped turtles. You gotta wait at least 24 hours. If you can wait 48, even better to let it completely dry. The back looks really nice. Now it's time for me to cut down this piece. I've devised this very simple clamping system to use in my scroll saw. It's just nuts and bolts with washers, one inch by three quarter inch hardwoods. I drilled the holes um, evenly on both sides and I have, these bolts are huge, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm using. And now I'm just going to be measuring an eighth of an inch to make my first cut. It is crucial that your bottom lies flat on the scroll saw so it's a nice even 90 degree angle cut. We're also checking your 90 degree blade angle from the back as well as the sides. Do not push this piece. You're going to hold on on either side here. Go nice and steady. So let's see how it turned out. All right. I think that'll work nice. I noticed my blade was getting a little dull, so I stopped and changed it to a new blade. This clamping system really does hold the piece nice and firm. And even when it got to that last slice when the piece was real thin, it still did just fine. I put all of the pieces back together and I'm using packing tape to wrap around, making sure everything is aligned properly. And I'm just going to be cutting the outside. I've drilled another pilot hole for an entry to cut the outside because when it gets close to me having the whole thing cut out, I don't want it falling apart since it's just taped together. I'm just using some mineral spirits right now to wipe down both sides so I can better see what I've got. Oh boy, that's going to look really nice. I have sanded both sides and evened out the bottom a little bit in areas where they were, it was a little thick. I went down to 400 grit on this. Now it's cleaned off with paint thinner or mineral spirits and I'm going to be coating it with polyurethane. The polyurethane has dried. I did a real light sanding and now it's time to cover with shellac front and back and sides. I like to use big box stores around here anytime I can instead of the internet. So I have purchased jewelry findings from Hobby Lobby and they are the hoop style that actually just slip into your ears here and then just regular round circles that will attach to my actual earrings. There are a lot of earring kits out there. Find the one that works best for you for your project. 
And there you go. A very unique pair of cathedral earrings. As you can probably tell by this video, this is not how to take your jewelry findings and put them on the earrings. There are plenty of videos out there about that. This is how to create your own special, unique scroll saw earrings. So I hope you've enjoyed this program and I'll see you next time.